Has anyone ever told you you're kind of a weird guy? Yeah, but they're all dead now. Welcome back to my channel and if you are new here then hey, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoy this review then please do consider giving it a like and a share. So let's talk about I Think We're Alone Now. This is a movie that is seemingly getting a lot of flack, bad reviews and generally quite panned. Now I'm not going to go and sit here and just say look everyone is wrong, by no means will I do that at all, but I will say that I actually disagree with the incredibly negative reviews, and I will say, what were you expecting? The trailer sets the tone of what movie you should expect to see, so I am very very surprised to see such negative reviews based on what they are actually saying versus the trailer. First and foremost, go and watch the trailer, because it is pretty indicative of the type of movie that you will be getting. So if you don't like the trailer and the look of the film from it, you're not gonna like this movie. The trailer actually does a very good job at setting the expectations of the audience for the film, I think anyway, which realistically, you actually have to give them a lot of credit for when we live in a world now where trailers are so far removed from the end product, they really are masterpieces of marketing Unfortunately, just not what you actually end up seeing. This film features Peter Dinklage, Elle Fanning, Charlotte Gainsborough and Paul Giamatti. It's directed by Reed Morano, who is also the head of photography, which is really, really important to note due to how beautiful this movie looks. It is written by Mike Makowski and look, it's, it's fairly well put together as a script but I will say that it's actually Reed Morano's directing and photography that elevates this movie to what it is and pushes it past the limitations of the script, which there are a lot of limitations with this script and screenplay. Peter Dinklage is the lead in this film, playing Dell, a man who believes that he is alone. It seems that the human race was wiped out, no idea how, no idea what happened, He's in a small town, occupying himself with just cleaning everything up, basically, methodically going about his days in complete solitude. And then in comes Elle Fanning's character, Grace, and things kind of begin to go astray. Ideas that you previously had go out of the window, and the movie changes the direction in which you believe that it was going. It is primarily a character piece, a study on one man's isolation, how he handles that, how he approaches it, and why he believes he's accustomed to it. From my own personal perspective, I would say that it's a character piece of Dinklage's character feeling like an outcast, and once he realized he was alone in the world, he felt at peace. He wasn't the odd one out, it was just him. He could do whatever he pleased. He could go about his day without the stares, the comments. He was right, this was now his world. It's not ham-fisted though, this is just my own personal interpretation of the movie based on some of the comments in the film here and there. So please don't think that this movie wants to throw a weird agenda down your throat because it doesn't portray itself as that and like I say, this is just my own personal interpretation. It is also so beautifully shot. With or without other characters in the story, we have long, lingering shots, a beautiful colour grading. The way the world is framed in camera is excellent, and pair that with a superb score, it takes on a truly captivating tone. You watch Dinklage about his day, cleaning houses methodically, dragging bodies to his truck and burying them, and you just want to keep watching. It really is an engaging watch visually. In terms of the tone change and the direction of the film changing, for me, this didn't actually come as too much of a shock for it to be overtly bad. It didn't disengage me from the movie. There is a point about two thirds into the film where things do change and it doesn't really go where you think it's gonna go. But for me, I honestly felt like it was a natural progression of the movie, although I can see why some people thought that it would have come out of left field. But like I say, for me, it, it makes sense, it works in terms of how the film was progressing up until that point. 
But I do think that the score and the subtle nuanced looks here and there illustrated that this film would be more than meets the eye and that there was something going on underneath it all. So even if you didn't think that this was a natural progression of the film, I feel that if you were listening to the score and the, the kind of nuanced looks, like I say, here and there, that you would have potentially picked up on the fact that something was going to happen that was a little bit left field, I guess. I won't say exactly what happens because I don't want to spoil this movie for anyone, but I felt it was justified and it fit with the story. I can recommend this film, absolutely, but it's not perfect. I initially saw Dinklage carrying the bodies and thought to myself, well, how is he doing that? For obvious reasons. And even I would have had issues dragging bodies day after day. However, they do explain it in the film by showing the bodies, the incredibly emaciated bodies, clearly in a heavy state of decay. And as such, they would actually be significantly lighter. Therefore, Dinklage moving them all by himself is fine. Like it is. A little bit of suspension of disbelief, but they do kind of explain it. I enjoyed the dynamic between Dinklage and Fanning, although again, there's not an awful lot of dialogue, so it's one of those kind of things which you pick up through the looks and the touches and just subtle moments here and there. But I do feel that there were some moments which genuinely could have had some more dialogue, like I just said. It's... It's one of those films where you think a little bit more explanation would have been nice of what was going on, but for me, it is satisfying as is. When the twist does come, I would have liked a little bit more of an explanation as well as to the fact that the twist hadn't happened previously. Now, again, I can't say what it is, but you'll pick up on this when you've watched the movie, or if you have watched the movie, you'll know what I mean. The twist comes along, and you think to yourself, why hasn't this happened before? But overall, it is a film that I can recommend. The score is one of the strong points and the beautiful cinematography from Reed Morano is a standout. Something that genuinely carries the film. The way the photography is set up, how it's executed, is really fantastic. It tells a story in and unto itself. It shows the world through this man's eyes. His struggles are pushed onto the screen through a very specific framing. And when he breaks down, the cinematography reflects that as well. It's a really great use of a storytelling tool, which I don't think is utilized enough in at least modern day Hollywood films. Why are you still alive? Why are you? You keep your town nice and clean. And we do that with our people. Take me with you. Take your hand off the wheel. I feel so sad for you. As said though, it's definitely not perfect. It is a very slow film. If you don't like slow burn movies or movies with very little dialogue, this is not going to be for you at all. I'll just say that outright. If you don't like films which are primarily a character piece but have a genre piece as the narrative journey for that character, then again, you won't like this film. Although it is marketed as a sci-fi drama, it isn't. First and foremost, it's a character piece. The sci-fi element is absolutely secondary. But it's not to the movie's detriment, in my eyes, anyway. So to wrap up, go out and watch this movie if you like character pieces. If you don't, and you're expecting something much more, then you really will be disappointed by this film. Dinklage is a fantastic actor, someone who genuinely does not get enough credit or complex roles where he can really showcase his skills. This is one of those movies where he shows a wide variety of depth, and it's a shame that it's getting slammed again, in my personal opinion. But hey-ho, those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you've seen the movie, I would love to hear what you think down below in the comment section. Did you like this film? Did you dislike this film? Do you agree with anything that I've said? And if you haven't seen the film, let me know if this review has swayed you. As always, guys, if you are new here, then please do hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date on all the world of pop culture, movie news, and also movie reviews. As always, I have a missed age. It's been a pleasure. Take care.